I define biohacking as the art and science of optimizing your performance, health, and well-being. And today we have the technologies and means to gain deeper insight into human biology. And I start with, uh, with an old quote that, that says that you can't manage what you don't measure. One of the biggest tragedies in life is not knowing if you are diseased or even if you are diseased, not knowing what to do about it. So the purpose of my speech would be to kind of bring some uh, real-time interventions or lifestyle, lifestyle practices that you can implement into your life. And part one is if you don't measure it, it don't get fixed. And I liked Tommy raised this issue just a few minutes ago. And in engineering, it's hugely important. You've got to measure the correct measurements that reflect the root causes that drive the issue. If you're measuring the wrong stuff, like cholesterol, you may get very distracted. And I'm going to bring up Pareto. So Pareto was a superb uh, individual sometime in the past, and he had the principle that 20% of your effort in an endeavor will deliver 80% of the results. So you've always got to focus in the best places where there's the biggest bang for the buck. You can spend 80% of your time on stuff that gives you back 20%. And this is a universal principle. When you start to measure something, you make an intervention, you look if the data changes, you look what happens subjectively and more objectively through data. You are better armed to ask better questions in the future, design better experiments, so it's a never-ending process of self-optimization. It's a never-ending process of really waking up from this dream of what is life, like becoming more aware, becoming more centered. When you dissect the life into two parts, then at first you're going to get uh, where life sprouts into existence is going to be DNA replication, cellular growth. And that's going to be, the, the term for that is going to be called the anabolism, where you're growing. And the opposite to that is entropy, or life itself, the process of living and dying. And that's going to be catabolism. Those two are these balancing uh, counterparts of uh, life. Within the us, I realized how we are not defined by our past. We're not defined by our future. Because we all have things, we all made mistakes. We all are beating ourselves up constantly for the decisions we didn't make, for decisions we did make, for things we call mistakes. But the most, um, the most dominant of that is that we let those moments define us. We let them define who we are in the current present moment. And nature showed me how much potential we have. Because if you realize that you can shift your beliefs, you can shift from thinking, okay, this is an ice bath and it's impossible to stay in there for so long. And then you shift that to creating your own reality and creating something that is possible. And that really kind of moved things to the stage where I became quite overweight. I became very stressed out because of a lot of the work that we were doing, all these clients, all the demands. I'm still 22. I'm jet lagged. I'm not sleeping. I'm insomniac. I'm eating shit, literally. I'm eating the worst foods. I know nothing about nutrition, and I don't care either. I'm just piling this stuff on. And this is when I started to feel that it wasn't just the company that there was something wrong with. There was actually something wrong with me. I was fucked. I was burnt the hell out. I was burning that candle on uh, both ends. It was the culmination of the bad food, not sleeping. This is a pretty depressing presentation, I'm sorry. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is my dream became one fuck off pressure cooker. I literally built my ideal prison uh, around myself. Now, I'm sorry, this is very depressing up until this point, but I promise we have light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Things get better from here on up, okay? You have to like hustle, hustle, hustle all of the time. Just work harder, just work harder. Get up earlier, go to bed later, and just work all of the time. And that's what I, I was doing. I thought I was running a marathon. But I now know that running a business and being effective uh, in life is actually more like sprints. Short bursts of activity, followed by the right amount of recovery, followed by another sprint, more recovery, and just alternating between these two. So, this is uh, a determination of biohacking, which I uh, recommend to approve. Biohacking is a measurable management 
of health indicators in order to reach optimal recovery, peak performance, peak performance not only in, in, in business, also in relationship, in health. We also need to, need to put goals for our health and to reach them. Um, reaching the goals, we need to have goals. These goals have to be balanced and it's also part of, of health. And as a result, self-realization of deep mission everybody has based on values. And the idea is that right now there are forces in your life all around you, everywhere in the world, that are making you do things that you didn't really want to do. They're making you do things that aren't necessarily oriented towards your happiness, towards your well-being, towards your growth. These things are like advertising. Hey, you know what? Your hair is not looking so good. You need some of this conditioner and this shampoo, and you probably should color it too. Hey, your butt's looking kind of big. You need these pants to kind of shrink it up a little bit. Hey, your eyebrows, that needs 100 euros of work. Your eyebrows are perfect. There's nothing wrong with them, okay? But that's not even the most insidious stuff. A lot of that stuff has already been laid down in your childhood. Somebody told you you weren't good enough. Somebody told you you couldn't do it. And I'm here to tell you that you have a choice. You have a choice to redesign your own software. What I encourage you to take away from this talk is that modern life is challenging. And there's a lot of people out there who aren't terribly happy, even though they have a lot. They have friends, they have cars, they have homes, they have unlimited food. These are things that we did not have for the past three million years, evolving as hominids on the savannah. And yet they're not happy. And that's because there are many forces that are trying to make you unhappy to serve their own purpose. Things like religion, country, your own family, culture. So what I encourage you to do is to realize that you have a lot more power than you thought. You have the power to change your own software and design it to orient it towards your own happiness. So think about what your happiness is. Think about what your fulfillment is. Think about what your flourishing looks like. And then please feel free to go about deliberately designing that for you as opposed to all the other accidents that have been happening in your life so far. You have a lot more power than you think. And I also want to ask, like, uh, how old are you, by the way? 67. 67. That's, that's really good. And you can embody, you embody the vitality yourself. So what, what would be some sort of, how do you keep yourself youthful, in a sense? Well, I do exercise about 10 hours a week, um, different kind. I play volleyball. I play tennis. I go to swim. I take sauna three, four times a a week. Um, I sleep well. Mm. I've optimized my sleep. I take quite a lot of supplements. I eat good food. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like you do it consistently in a sense. You've, you've been probably practicing these things ever since you were a young man already. I got inspiration for supplements and healthier life when I was 50. So I have been doing <laughs> it more than 50 years. That's a good head start. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank, thanks again for uh, sharing. So <clears throat> first of all, let's start with the problem. This is like a big fire in the world. And what is the fire? What is this red thing? It's this mm, cardiovascular disease, as you can see. That's the main cause for most of the civilization to, for death. So our blood circulation is not working in a proper way. So a big, big, big problem. And of course, it has a big impact on, on, on the society and, and the cost for the society. Another very familiar is diabetes. And, and this is, uh, we all know that this is a big problem. We, in, even in here, in, I think in Estonia and in Finland, it's 10% of all people, they have some sort of diabetes, 10%. Uh, and we have thought that that's more for the development country, developed, developed countries and not for the developing countries. But that's, that's where the real big bomb is. If you look at these big countries like South Asia or India, they will just explode in the next uh, 25 years in, in uh, diabetes. So why do I tell about this? It's this. Uh, <clears throat> these big problems, then they start in a very small fires. So the big fire starts with the small fire. That's the thing. So what is this small fire? And that's the mi microcirculation. The problem starts in microcirculation. Another question is, what is this microcirculation? 
Actually, it, it's not been so known, uh, even to the medicine, uh, only since the last 20, 30 years, it's really becoming more focused. And during the last 10 years, it's really getting uh, some focus. So there are some, if, even if you talk with some medical professionals, they don't really know what, what is microcirculation. So, and they say, here again, small blood vessels, big health problems. So what is your favorite recipe of using some of these powerful superfoods from the north? Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, like I mentioned, I use the chaga mushroom in my coffee basically almost every day. And it's, kinda, it's a good balance because you, you get the caffeine boost from the coffee and when you, when you get the adaptogenic benefits of the chaga, then it kind of grounds you more. You don't get the overstimulated aspect of co caffeine or, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time, you're going to build up your immune system. So my daily, daily use of these mushrooms is I simply add, whether to coffee or tea, or if I'm not drinking coffee or tea, then I'll simply take a, take a teaspoon out of it. So it's very simple, like uh, as a supplement almost. Super, yeah. I also like to add some chaga into my coffee because chaga is slightly... Uh, alkaline and uh, coffee is acidic, it mm. balances the pH value a little bit more and it, it brings up the ORAC value yeah. and, and definitely helps with oxygen intake um, in, in exercise and so on. It seems like uh, there are some studies they've done on humans that um, your resilience and stamina will be better with some chaga. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to food, the actual quality within that category might actually mean more than the name of the category. So when I was trying to heal my chronic diseases about 15 years ago, uh, it was very, very difficult to find any high quality natural foods. And it was also very difficult to find any good information about how, how the healing process actually works in a natural way. But nowadays the situation is so much better. I'm so happy to just go to any supermarket and find some high quality natural foods or things like that. And I'm really glad to go to the library or bookstore or internet or anywhere and find some really good information, like for example here. 2012, my doctor said, you got epilepsy for life. Um, that was not easy thing to get. But what I did get was medication. I got tablets in my hand. Eat them and you'll be fine. But the medication changed my mind. I got a bad person. I was shouting at my kids. I was not a good person to be around. So I had to find some solution to this. And I found something called the ketogenic diet. And I'm sure you biohackers know what this is. It's, well, it's, it's a good breakfast several times a day. Basically, all you need is, is, is uh, talk in a high-frequency voice, play some nice music, some healing sounds, and that, it, that works on the biological level. Of course, breathing, breathing, it's the direct connection with our nervous system. You can train your, your uh, parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system and also, at the same time, get yourself out of these freeze and shut down mode and being in uh, uncomfortable situations. We're creating a very different environment. It's natural, but it's not natural in certain senses. So we are creating something completely new. And what I see in the essence of it as a huge mirror, we are externalizing our internal world by technology, but to make that look deeper into us, that's just one route. And we can also take that route where we just use everything around already and look deeper into us. How do we relate into our environment, other people, everything. How aware are you, the situation around you right now? So we are moving into different phase, but I think that they are, these are overlapping right now. Appreciate the biological needs that you have, the primal parts that we have. Expose yourself to cold, heat, the air quality, water quality. Connect with these things. 
because they go deep, they're tattooed into our genome. But also be curious what you can do to actually create something completely new. You guys are biohackers and biohacking is a form of transformational education because you're learning that you can do so much more with your human body than what you were brought up to believe. The problem with education today is that not enough of those ideas get to children, get to people in college. In fact, there's an overemphasis on the concept of getting a job and getting a salary. But the world is changing so fast. If your entire obsession is just job and salary, you're not going to be the most extraordinary, well put together human being. Today in life, we know that there are so many things we have to learn that actually have a better correlation with human fulfillment, a better correlation with happiness than just job and salary. Things such as the health of your body, the cognition ability of your mind, your ability to go within and practice uh, practices like mindfulness or meditation, your ability to have relationships with other human beings, uh, with loved ones, things such as conscious parenting or being able to live a life aligned with your mission. But schools don't teach you this. Instead, schools teach you things so you can get a good grade, so you can get a decent job, so that you can get a paycheck. But if you look at the data, according to Gallup, 87% of people in the world today dislike their jobs. And so education is broken. It's setting us up for a life that we end up wasting 70% of our waking hours on something that brings us no fulfillment, at least to the vast majority of people out there. Now, if schools shift from teaching career advice, essentially, to actually teaching things like biohacking, like mindfulness, like conscious practices, like how to go within and how to have emotional intelligence and how to speak your truth and how to work on something aligned with your mission. We create much better, well-rounded human beings. As the philosopher Ken Wilber says, we are not even at education 1.1, we're at education 0.1. We train little human beings for a tiny slice of what life is truly about. Which is why I appreciate what you guys are doing with biohacking. Because biohacking is already an expansion of our awareness of just what our bodies can do. And we spend all our waking hours in our bodies. Why not make it the best damn bodies out there? I, I want you to say, you know, what you say in every freaking video on YouTube. <laughs> in the end, go ahead and say it. Well, it's going to be... Give your best performance. This, well, I'm always tying it together with what, what was the topic of the video. So, yeah, if, if it is indeed has been the day of biohacking, so I'll, so I'll say, like, stay upgraded and stay empowered. All right. Uh, thank Amazing. You. Thank you.